Okay, I am going to go ahead and get started. I have pushed record so those people who are coming in a little bit late can go back and watch the recording after. Um, thank you so much everyone for being here today. I see some, um, some familiar faces, uh, well names anyway. Um, please, uh, in, in regards to faces, if you would like to turn on your camera. Love to see all your shining faces as this is a community group. I've got my community shirt on. You know, we're really excited about um, uh, bringing the people together in the insurance community. Um, and would love to see your faces if you would like to join. Um, again, uh, appreciate you guys all being here today. Uh, we have some really special guests that are here um, with some uh, follow up on some announcements that have been made over the last uh, couple of, well, I guess month or so, a um, couple of months, but uh, leading up to the, the acquisition and things in the last month. And um, we're really excited to talk about what's coming up in the insurance world. Um, as everyone, just kind of some housekeeping items. Um, you are on mute uh, as you're coming in, you're muted. Um, if you uh, feel free to, to unmute yourself or raise your hand, um, put something in the chat, et cetera. I'll be monitoring um, as I go along uh, today with the guest speakers as well. Um, so love to have interaction. Um, again, this is for you. Uh, this, this entire meeting is um, all around our community and getting our people up to speed on that. So uh, love to hear from you as we go through. And uh, with that said, I just want to say a huge thank you. Thank you to all of you who are taking time out of your day to come be a part of this community. Um, thank you so much for the guest speakers who are here, who are putting uh, time and energy and, and things out of their days to come and uh, share kind of some of the best practices and really cool things that are happening in the ecosystem around the insurance vertical. Um, so a big thank you to everyone. Thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart to um, allow me to kind of bring this group together and have everyone here. Um, again, uh, the, the spirit of this is succeeding together. So not everyone is on the same path. Not everyone is using the same products. Not everyone is um, doing things the exact same way. And that is uh, wonderful. We are uh, excited to be here and to share knowledge with each other, best practices around each other. Um, but also some kind of cool ideas and things that you guys have done in the past. So um, just really excited to be here and succeeding together. So quick agenda, um, we're gonna do some introductions really quick, um, introduce myself uh, and um, the, the community group at large. Um, we're gonna have, we have a special guest speaker uh, to talk through the uh, Salesforce insurance updates um, and all of the, the new things that are both in the most previous release and then a little bit of a roadmap of what you should be able to be seeing uh, coming up. Um, and then we have another uh, very special guest speaker who is here, um, who is going to talk about the velocity acquisition, um, what that means to you guys and the value that it brings to anyone in the Salesforce ecosystem since you guys choose to, to use that. Uh, we'll go through uh, both of those presentations and then uh, we're gonna spend a bulk amount of time this afternoon uh, going through group discussion, knowing and understanding um, what your issues are, uh, what, you, what you're thinking uh, from a, a business transformation and technology transformation in the insurance industry, um, and just get some good group discussions going, and then I'll have a few additional announcements at the end um, that talk about kind of upcoming uh, meetings and uh, information for you as well. So that said, um, hello to everyone who doesn't know me. Um, I, I do see several uh, faces that are out there, people who do. So uh, hello to everyone who does know me. Um, I am Danielle Laffey. I work uh, at Silverline um, and the principal of insurance solutions um, there. I started working uh, in the community groups back in 2007. I was one of the fifth uh, user groups globally. Um, started that in Indianapolis as an admin group, um, and then just as my career has continued to progress, um, really started to get into involved in the insurance world, uh, and then about a year or so ago, not quite a full year ago, um, was asked by a cohort of mine, um, who was also a client at the time, to kind of revive this community group um, from the insurance perspective globally. Um, she, and I think actually Alexis is on uh, right now, so hello to Alexis and a little shout out to her. Um, she has moved on uh, outside of the, the insurance vertical, uh, so I am currently actually looking for another person to help run this with me. Um, if you or anyone who is interested, um, 
would love to run this with me. I love collaboration. I um, would love to have a different perspective um, on, on the group itself. And uh, if you are looking to get a little bit more involved in the community, um, please reach out to me uh, via the community, via email, via my Twitter account. Um, there's all, all sorts of information that you can uh, contact me with, but um, would love to have would love to have another person here to kind of help uh, go with the community and fill in Alexis's spot because um, I do miss her dearly. <laughs> um, okay, and with that said, um, I'm going to introduce introduce Doug Sitzer. Um, he is currently the global go-to-market director for the insurance team at Salesforce. Uh, prior to joining here, uh, he spent um, almost 20 years, I believe, um, in the property and casualty space uh, in a variety of different roles. I think that he did some digital transformations. Um, he helped with a lot of data management and um, customer experience. I think that he even spent a little bit of time in procurement. So he knows any and all of the woes and tales and um, has battle scars uh, to go through it all over the last 20 years, um, along with some really amazing triumphs that he's had um, while he's gone through his career. And we're excited that he um, is here today. And um, I believe that uh, Doug, you um, not only spend a little bit of time with your family, but you have an interesting collection um, of, of things that you like to collect. And I even have gotten seen a couple of them um, while I had visited you uh, when we were in Indiana, when I was in Indiana, um, do you want to talk a little bit about your uh, your guitar and rock and roll collection? Well, you only gave me ten minutes for the <laughs> problem. Um, uh, I've got to believe people would rather talk about rock and roll than the Salesforce updates from the summer. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, back in um, in college, um, even though I was studying finance, I thought I was going to go into the music industry and this thing called Napster hit. And I was working in radio at the time, this dates me a little bit, and uh, digital music took over and I ended up in insurance. But uh, the connections that I made allowed me to build a network of people um, that allowed me to go and approach artists and ask them for guitars in their rigs once they're done with them. Um, sometimes I try and force their hand a little bit sooner than they're willing to give it up, but. Yeah, I have a, an unbelievable man cave with uh, stage used rock and roll guitars um, displayed in some custom cases. So uh, that's my getaway. That's awesome, awesome. Um, well, I'm going to switch on over here to your uh, presentation really quick. Um, is there anything else? I, I don't know if there's anything else you wanna say about the, the introduction. Um, you obviously have been around the insurance vertical for a long period of time, so we're excited to have you here. I think you've been um, at Salesforce now for close to a year at this point, right? So that's Closing on it. Yeah, about eight months. Uh, a former client, I guess that was the only other thing I would add to the introduction, um, started with Sales and Service Cloud and was an early adopter, uh, migrating over to Financial Services Cloud. So um, big fan. It's what led me to be sitting here with you today. It's great to be with everybody. We'll keep it short and sweet because I really want us to uh, to talk more with our with our second speaker. I think that's one of the biggest highlights in, in recent memory within financial services for Salesforce. But two things that I, I wanted to pass along. This first one is really focused on the summer release highlights. Um, I know Danielle will distribute this um, to everybody here on the call. The hyperlink up there in the title will take you into um, a lot more additional details. I know I'm a visual person, so I really like to get eyes on um, exactly what is happening and, and how it potentially would impact my business. Three categories of highlights as I was looking over what's coming in. Um, and these are, again, because it's insurance focused and primarily where we're investing from a core perspective is on FSC. Um, these are really bundled around that, um, that particular piece of our platform. From an EA and process standpoint, um, and I won't read this to you guys, but I'll try and unpack it a little bit. Um, we heard loud and clear from our, our customers that uh, some of the out-of-the-box uh, dashboards and reports were new, a little too new business focused. Not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, it, with a lot of the market pressure, the hardening market especially, people are really focused on making sure they're keeping their existing book. So um, retention reports, cross-sell and upsell, you're going to see um, some deeper and cooler things there. 
um, that again are out of the box. Um, action plan templates. There's, there's two things that are really cool about the action plan templates. Again, really great feedback from our clients that led to this change. The first one is being able to um, take the templates and actually distribute them easier as a part of task queues. Um, so that was something making um, information, making data um, actionable um, in a real way, and then taking it to the next level, allowing users to customize it. And of course, this is something you can control through permissions, but we heard people say, hey, this is great. I've got a, you know, an action plan that might have, you know, I'll make up numbers here, six bullets in it. But people like to take it a step further. Sometimes it's line of business specific. Sometimes it's, it's function specific. And they can act, add additional steps and depth into those action plans that are meaningful for them that really keep them on point and really act as a, as a piece of governance for them. So that flexibility is going to be there. Um, and general updates. Um, do you mind if I interrupt you for just a second on that particular, yeah, go ahead. Uh, particular one? So um, just kind of bringing it into the insurance world in general. I actually, uh, because this tax cues just came out, um, I were in, in the process of implementing this at one of our clients. Um, and it's really cool. Um, they have, you know, we, there's all these tasks in and around uh, making a policy uh, application uh, and quoting um, all in, in good order, if you will. Um, and so they are starting to take these tasks and, and, and attaching them to um, the cases and the uh, policies uh, applications um, so that they can get them into in good order. Uh, and then instead of having one particular person that needs to get assigned to, they're actually putting in a queue so their, their um, collective group of people can actually go in and pick those up and, and, and work through them very quickly, um, which was a, a really cool use case that I saw in the insurance world uh, that, that we were able to implement this. Um, very quickly. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to bring that in as a, um, that's how it relates to, to your world in a, a real world scenario of how we're using um, task queues, which is cool. Very cool. Um, a couple other things that we heard on the general updates, and I'll shift down to the bottom, and it really gives us a transi transition into the next slide. Um, we, we saw and we heard that um, some of the, um, the data structure that we had and some of the reports um, we're causing some hiccups when it comes to policies with a lot of risks, with multi-line policies. You know, the modular structure is the structure that the industry tends to use. And some of the reports um, were getting a little, little fuzzy and potentially based on how they were configured, double counting both policy counts and premiums. So there's some clear options and controls there to allow people um, to make sure they can get to the level that they need. And then the other thing that we heard was in the interest of transparency, um, whether it's internal and other functions or externally with distribution partners, starting to externalize more of the claims information and being selective about what depth that you want to display. Um, you know, claims managers, of course, should raise their hand and say, hey, I want to only produce a, a very high level summary level, probably to my independent agents. Um, I, I, we can't give them a lot of depth. And so um, what we wanted was just that flexibility by persona to be able to say yes, no at different levels of detail about what it is that you want to communicate. But again, provides an, a level of transparency we believe is going to make it easier um, to build that trust and loyalty and to remain transparent. On the distribution management side, and this is where um, we're, we're really kind of shifting um, a little bit. Uh, there, there's a lot of hot topics going on right now behind the scenes at Salesforce, and there's probably not a lot of them that rise to the level of distribution management. You know, it, no surprise if you've attended any, you know, Dreamforce, World Tours, other things over the past few years, you've seen a focus on stage on um, personal lines P and C. And, and, and that's okay. That's where a lot of the insure tech investments have been. Um, you know, as consumers, all of us have demanded experiences with our carriers that are very similar to how we shop and do other things on our phone. It's been about that convenience. And one of the biggest problems that's existed um, since the beginning of time with insurance is the inefficiency that exists in the distributor and carrier relationship. And so we're, we're really doubling down and making an investment there, making it easier um, for these two critical stakeholders to work together 
um, within the insurance environment. And, and that's regardless of whether you're an independent, um, you're a captive or exclusive, um, an MGA or, or any other label that, that might apply. So drilling down, kind of connecting dots up to that EA and process box, Danielle, is the ability now to extend action plans out to partner communities. It, it's back to that collaboration, making them involved in the process as opposed to, you know, relying, you know, too heavily on email or throwing things over a wall. And each time you do, it goes into a black hole where you, you don't know where it's at and, um, and how much of it's been completed. Um, now we've got this, this sharing that can occur, whether it's at a producer level, a sales manager, an underwriter. Um, you can get people collaborating around some of these action plans. And then the second one was, um, you know, we've been, um, and it was very purposeful, invested in carrier-focused policy hierarchies and realized that we need to um, make an investment on the agency side as well. Um, those structures can be very unique. They can be very, very deep in terms of, of offices and NGOs and lines of the business um, that, that brokers manage. And so just providing some depth there, again, encourage the group to go out and look at the release highlights for a lot more detail on those. But if we can shift real, real quick um, to the second slide um, before we go to our, our, our next um, guest, one of the things, and I guess I, Alexis, who's on the call, knows that I, I love analogies. And so when I was thinking about this one, um, I, I thought about, you know, sometimes you, you walk in, you, maybe you're not following your meal plan. You're like, I'm really hungry for something, and I'm not exactly sure what. And you're looking through your cupboards. You're looking at your, your ingredients in your refrigerator. What can I put together? And we had kind of an aha moment um, prior to this release where we looked at some of the ingredients that we had in our ecosystem, and we said, oh, my gosh we could make something really, really cool here um, out, of, out of pieces that already exist for the most part. We need a little bit with a summer release, but it's really a focus on using Salesforce as an enterprise workflow and orchestration tool and really taking that, um, that agency uh, distribution management to the next level. And so this is a, a very summary level. Um, we're gonna take this solution out live um, early August and you know, we can't hand over requirements, but what we do wanna be able to do with our clients and with our SIs is give them really a recipe card of here's how we did this using um, the tools and configuration within FSC to build omni-channel intake. You know, a lot of folks on the phone, um, it's probably all too familiar to them that they've got a lot of different ways that business comes in, whether it's multiple email, boxes, different um, digital intake channels, paper still coming in. Um, we wanna bring that consolidated inbox um, into Salesforce and let it do really that step two, which is some of that air traffic control. Who are you? Who's who in the zoo? How should this work be directed? And also using the data to say, what is the priority here? Um, is this an account that, is this a submission that we'd seen the past four years? What were the results of that? Um, can we automate whether or not we want to get to know or this is eligible for quote again this year based on business rules? The third thing then is if, you know, if it, if it doesn't qualify for straight through processing, um, what's the underwriter experience? Do they have a common inbox? Um, do they have a dashboard that helps bring together third party data and um, information from disparate systems? And again, this is not meant to replace a policy admin system um, or the deep underwriting and workflow rules that could and should exist at that level. But it's, it's again, meant to bring things together in a holistic way. Think of it as customer 360 for an underwriter and for a submission. And so we've invested heavily there. And then the last one to kind of tie a bow on this and connect it back to the last slide is really bringing some new um, reports and dashboards and collaboration tools to, uh, to the forefront that allow people to manage not just their own teams, and what they're working on and making sure they're maximizing not just their, their hit ratios on submissions, but their combined ratio in general, but working with their agents to identify cross-sell and upsell opportunities, net new logos, and what carry, I'm sorry, what agencies they should be working on to grow their book, especially in this hardening market. So um, I'll pause there. Um, happy to take any questions, but we think this is an unbelievable compliment to uh, the acquisition that we wrapped up on June 1st, which is Velocity, which is really the highlight, I think, of the rest of our chat today.
Awesome. Um, well, again, uh, this is uh, obviously a group um, chat, so love to, uh, if somebody has a particular uh, subject that they would like to bring up now, I'm happy to have that conversation. Otherwise, I can um, get Liz going and talk about philosophy, and then we can, we have some group um, group discussion questions uh, at the end if we want to go that way. So if there's, is there any burning questions that we want to ask really quick before we move on over to Liz? And that philosophy acquisition. All right. You always have to make that like silence pause just enough where it's super awkward, you know? <laughs> okay. So Liz, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, really appreciate you being here as well. Um, I just want to introduce you really quick. So I believe you've spent the last three years kind of running the product marketing for the insurance vertical at Velocity. Um, and prior to that, you spent a, a significant amount of time um, in the insurance industry um, at Prudential uh, for marketing on, on the life uh, insurance. And then I think that you even spent some additional time at MetLife um, as you were building their on, online um, direct-to-consumer business uh, for life insurance specifically. Um, I, I don't know if you have anything other that is specifically that you would like to add on your experience, um, but it, it, it sounds like you've been been around for a very long period of time in the insurance world as well, and also uh, here at Velocity. Um, excited to have you here on the, the FinCert side of the side of things. Um, so, and, and I don't think that you, you collect guitars for fun either. Um, <laughs> although it is a really cool ho a hobby to have to do uh, anything particular for fun outside of guitar collecting. No, I do not collect uh, guitars, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, I think my hobbies are, are pretty boring. Um, so I, so I won't bore you with my hobbies. Um, but yeah, um, I'll, I'll correct Danielle. Thank you so much for, um, having me here today. Um, as, as you mentioned, I, I do come from the insurance world, um, having spent uh, time at, at both Prudential and MetLife, and have spent the past three years um, doing product marketing for Velocity uh, for our insurance vertical. And now very excited to be part of the Salesforce Industries uh, product marketing team. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Velocity for, for those of you who may be new to our, our company and, um, and then I'll give you an introduction to the insurance specific capabilities that we now bring to Salesforce. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with Velocity, we were founded about six years ago and quickly became the fastest growing partner on the Salesforce app exchange. Um, and we've been providing industry specific capabilities on top of Salesforce for six different verticals. Um, so we support communications, we support media, energy, public sector, um, health insurance, and then insurance. Um, and we have about a thousand employees worldwide. And back in February, uh, Salesforce announced plans to acquire Velocity. Um, and then the acquisition closed in early June. So we're now officially part of Salesforce. And the CEO, former CEO of Velocity, David Schmeier, he is now the head of Salesforce Industries. Um, so we have this new division within, within Salesforce called Salesforce Industries. Super awesome. Uh, um, so Danielle, if you wanna uh, go to the next slide. Absolutely. Um, so what, what you can see here um, on the left, we have, um, the financial services cloud products that um, many, of you, many of you are familiar with, including Einstein Analytics for financial services and Community Cloud for financial services. And then over on the right here are the Velocity modules that are now um, part of this Salesforce insurance platform. So you've got a quote rate and apply, which is um, our end-to-end -end customer acquisition module, and it includes a rating engine and a rules engine um, product catalog, product configuration tools um, to support that new business process. And then we have a policy administration module. So that's a, a cloud-based system of record um, and a module that en enables you to manage the full range of policy transactions. So midterm adjustments and cancellations and renewals, et cetera. And then we have an end-to-end -end claims management module um, which 
enables a peril-based first notice of loss experience. It enables um, auto adjudication. We have a rules framework to enable auto adjudication. And then we have a whole adjuster workbench where the claims adjuster can manage all the financials um, associated with settling a claim. And then finally, our last module is what we call omni-channel service. And um, that's where we have guided digital service transactions um, that can be used in a contact center, as well as in online portals for agents or for policyholders. Um, and so what, really what we're trying to do is allow insurers to run you know, more and more of their business on the Salesforce platform and integrate with that, that customer journey. Uh, so if you wanna take a look at the next slide, uh, Danielle. Absolutely. Um, I do want to just kind of put a little personal anecdote in here. So this new um, quote, rate, and apply um, module that you guys have go up and going, I'm actually going through a training right now, um, and we've been going through several applications for this. Um, this slide specifically talks to the uh, financial services cloud and, and how it works in and around that, but I'm also going through additional modules of how it goes through with health insurance and how it goes with pet and how it goes with life. Um, so it's been... Uh, it's 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 a, a very robust um, tool set, uh, and um, I'm 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 really enjoying going through it. So I just kind of wanted to put a little personal anecdote on that. That um, it doesn't just go with FinServe, although that um, you know that is specifically what we're talking through here. Um, but it applies to uh, any and all insurance verticals. Yeah, that's a great point, Danielle. Thank you. Um, so our our quote rate and apply solution um, is really a middle office engine and it does support all lines of business. So we use it extensively in our health insurance practice um, and we have it deployed in you know, life insurance companies, PNC, um, you know, group benefits. Um, so it is supportive of all lines of business. Um, when, when we go into policy admin in, and in claims, those solutions are more tailored to, to the PNC market. Yep. Um, Perfect. Okay, there you are, my dear. So um, this is a kind of new diagram of our FSC insurance platform architecture. Um, and you can see the velocity applications in the middle in blue. Um, so what, what's really important to note here is that these velocity uh, applications are built and run 100% on financial services cloud. Um, and they're meant to be completely additive to FSC. Um, so you've got the benefit of this. Um, great customer 360 CRM platform that's now enhanced with these middle and back office engines um, that are gonna make that customer experience that much better. That's awesome. Um, so if there are no questions there, we'll move to the next slide. Perfect. Um, so the combination of Velocity Insurance with Financial Ser Services Cloud um, creates what we think is something truly unique in the marketplace um, as it really brings together the front, middle, and back office um, to accelerate transformation at every stage of the, the customer journey. So what we have here is what we think are kind of the key benefits of this combined platform. Um, so number one, you know, you're integrating your marketing and your sales and your service journeys with things like quoting and underwriting, illustrations, um, you know, claims management and billing um, to really automate those omni-channel customer journeys. Um, and the platform was designed to enable speed to market. Um, so we have our insurance specific data model, our, our user consoles, our low code architecture. And Velocity has an extensive uh, process library with dozens of service and sales transactions that can be downloaded by our customers and then deployed um, you know, very quickly to any channel. Uh, we know that straight through processing and minimizing human interaction is very important, um, especially in this world that we're living in today. Um, so uh, Velocity's data-driven rules framework enable straight through processing and, and quoting and underwriting and claims. And then with all the insure tech disruption um, that's taking place uh, in the industry, the ability to innovate and launch new products quickly is also very important. Um, and we make it very easy and fast to launch new products um, 
with uh, you know, our communities and our, our digital engagement layer along with Velocity's code-free um, product design tools and our, our code-free rating engine. And then finally, um, you know, by moving more core processes, um, such as policy administration and claims to the cloud um, and consolidating applications, you really start to gain agility and efficiency, um, ultimately cost savings within the organization. Awesome. Um, I can attest to the process library. It's um, a very robust feature set, uh, which I've, I've uh, found uh, immensely helpful as I've, I've been going through and, and implementing um, on my side for the particular items, the, the speed um, in which you can get things. They, they actually come not just with the, the, live, the processes themselves that you can download in, but data packs. It comes with user stories. It comes with process flows. It comes with all of the business assets in and around that are needed um, so that you can Everyone does business a little bit differently, right? But um, you know, if you go in and, and you see kind of out of the box Salesforce items that you might have to deactivate or, or you know remove, get rid of, um, in order to make Salesforce work for you, um, this is wonderful that you can you can pick and choose which items you're going to actually put into it, um, and then customize from there. So it actually ends up saving a decent amount of time, energy, and um, um, with your teams and with development uh, because you're not having to deactivate a bunch of things that you don't necessarily um, need or want to customize uh, in your organization um, and you can really tailor it to your own particular processes which is really cool so yeah thanks danielle yeah oh sorry were we done with that slide yes um, I maybe jump forward a little too soon sorry if i did <laughs> no, that's okay uh so this is a, a snapshot of our um our customers. So Salesforce has over a thousand customers globally in the insurance space, and um, over 30 of those are actually joint Velocity and Salesforce customers. Awesome. Um, so we've already had a lot of uh, success to date, um, and we're you know rapidly growing our footprint globally. So we're really excited just to continue to build on this momentum. Um, and just to give you a few examples, so MetLife was actually one of our very first customers, um, our very first joint customers here in the U.S. Um, and we are providing them with a um, service solution in their contact center, uh, supporting over nine lines of business um, across four different contact centers uh, with you know, digital guided uh, service transactions. Um, and then Atlas Insurance, um, probably haven't heard of them, but they're actually a leading PNC insurer in Malta. And they're replacing a lot of old legacy um, policy admin and, and quoting and claim systems with Velocity on FSC. And uh, Canada Life, um, they're one of our largest joint deployments in Canada. Um, and they're deploying a, an integrated digital experience uh, for members in group benefits, uh, life and retirement savings. So all of our joint customers are 100% on the Salesforce platform. Um, and they're really using Velocity to accelerate time to market and accelerate their digital transformation on Salesforce. Um, so I can kind of dig a little deeper into one of our customer stories if you want to um, go to the next slide, Danielle. That'd be awesome. Thank you. So um, this, is, this is a great company, Ascot. Um, you may be familiar with them. They're actually part of Ascot Group which is owned by the uh, Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. Um, they're a specialty insurance company. And a few years ago, they launched a new business venture in the US, um, headquartered in New York City. And they wanted to tap into the U US uh, business casualty market. And they were looking for a digital platform for their brokers and underwriters to write this new business. And they wanted them to be able to do it in a very consumer friendly and easy and fast way. Um, so we worked with them very closely in about nine months, they were able to uh, deploy our quoting, our quote rate and apply module and our broker and underwriter portals. Um, and they used our integration technology to uh, incorporate a lot of third party data into the quoting and underwriting process. And they have really, really simplified the, the quoting and underwriting 
uh, process, they've been able to reduce their underwriting administration time by 60%. And they're also using Salesforce analytics to um, help brokers focus on the accounts that are most likely to convert. Um, they're really happy with their Salesforce and Velocity solution. We just did a webinar with them a few uh, weeks ago and they're looking to expand into other lines of business and move more of their technology onto to Salesforce and Velocity. Uh, so we're really looking forward to helping them grow their business. Awesome. Um, do you by chance have a link to that webinar? Would, would it be? Sure. Can I yeah, I'd be happy to share it. Um, I don't know if anyone would be interested in hearing directly from the customer, but um, but yeah, I the fact that they have a 60% reduction in underwriting administration timeframe, I'd, I'd be interested to hear um, what that means for them and their business and, and how they can continue to innovate because they you know, have so much um, additional energy and um, uh, yeah, it would, be, it would be wonderful to be able to share that out with the group. Yeah, I, I would love to share that. Cool. Um, so yeah, so this is just one customer story. We, we certainly have others to share and um, hopefully this, this gave you all a, a good kind of high level overview of Velocity and, and the capabilities that we're bringing to, to Salesforce. Um, certainly would be happy to you know, dig deeper into our different solution areas and provide a, a product demo. Um, you know, if, if you want to reach out to your Salesforce account executive, uh, partners, then we, we can certainly set up, um, you know, a more, more of a deep dive meeting with any of you that might be interested. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I think that we've come to the end of our slides here for this one. So I think it is time to open up to group discussion, um, if that works for for the team, um, and I think the first first one um, that I would love to kind of open up to the group in general, and just kind of want to remind everyone that you are on mute, um, so you'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, and would love to have a discussion time on this one. Um, uh, we were going back and forth on trying to determine, you know, what what specific questions to ask here, and I think that's something that continues to come back up and actually baffles me to a certain extent of how many lines of business are still on a manual process versus um, digital. And so I'm interested to hear uh, from the group of the people who are on now, you know, what, what lines of business do, are, do you guys currently have in, that are actually digital versus manual right now? And, um, and how are you looking to, to potentially move that forward or, or challenge as to, you know, why you haven't moved on from that manual to a digital process yet at this point? Not everybody go at once. <laughs> <laughs> As you were going through, um, Doug, in the in your presentation and talking through, um, you know the different avenues in which uh, particular information comes in from a, a business perspective. Um, you know, emails and uh, portals and and whatnot. I was actually surprised as I've gone through. Um, over the last year or so um, with, I don't know, probably half a dozen um, implementation partner or implementations that I've worked with clients on, um, how many people still use faxes? Mm -hmm. And they get faxed enrollment information in, which is a baffling to me, um, that people are actually getting faxes in and then keying that information in and how inefficient that is. Um, and, and the ability to just, you know, even updating that to a certain extent um, and the amount of efficiency that you would gain from something like that um, is, has been um, a really big game changer for, for our people. Well, that's why they call it omni-channel. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know that we'd be able to say that. No, I, I think there's a, a fear um, by a lot of carriers that if they turn off some of those um, legacy intake channels that they'll um, they'll scare away some of their their long time and and older customers. I'll just, yeah. I'll just tell you what it is. And um, there's probably a little bit of truth to that. Others have said, you know what? Um, we know they have other technology available to them in their office, and so we're gonna we're gonna pull the plug and and force them into an online portal or some other means that we know is gonna give them better service at the end of the day. And a much better experience. Um, they want their policy fast. They want it correct. They want it at a great price. And um, yeah, we're, we're, I'm waiting any any day to hear that fax has officially died. 
I'm still having to, to put fields um, on accounts that have fax numbers in them, which every single time I do it, I just cringe a little bit in my heart. Like, really? Really, fax guys? <laughs> so. I don't know, with the group, are, are you guys, um, and, and again, looking at the group, I'm not sure how many of you are actually, um, are actually with the particular insurance companies themselves versus, you know, partners and or consultants and things like that. But even if you're not um, within the company itself or, or you're a, a consultant, are you seeing clients that are digital versus manual? And what are the challenges that they're facing as to why they, they may not be moving over um, to a digital process or a digital transformation? Love to hear through that as well. Has anyone at all seen an effect on, um, since uh, obviously the topic of the day is COVID pretty much any, anyone always, um, the last couple of months, anyone seen effect to your particular business uh, in the way that it's been influenced uh, to go digitally uh, because of uh, the forcefulness of, of COVID restrictions and being able to be face-to-face -face or in the office or um, the way they're using technology that way? This is Pami. We're a Salesforce partner. Um, so we have um, several like insurance clients and one of the COVID effects that we saw was actually on an employee benefits company. Um, so they were kind of hit hard. And so they were going headstrong into all of their digital transformations. And then um, they definitely paused. They let go of all of their developers that they had in-house except like two of them. Um, and, and yeah, so they definitely took a toll. And then uh, another story we had was um, there was another client who, or a potential client, I guess, who um, just got funding and we had been kind of in discussions of a CRM because they have a distributed team and their underwriters are across the United States. And um, we had kind of been in discussions about a CRM and then as they, they had a few um, internal changes on their uh, leadership, and then um, COVID happened and we kind of brought it back up and it's like, hey, now is a great time, especially to kind of get your CRM um, and have that transformation or have you know, a better way for your underwriters to communicate. And he was like, nope, it's now a 2022 initiative. <laughs> and you're like, how does that happen? <laughs> how did these things um, translate from COVID happening to not needing a CRM for two more years instead of maybe a year? Um, so yeah, that was, it was just interesting to see the different ways in which COVID has kind of made these decisions for different companies. Yeah. That's crazy. So it's really put a hold on on some of the transformations. Uh, so I, I have seen it, it's a kind of an extreme of one way or the other, um, from what I've noticed anyway, is uh, people are either um, completely stopping altogether and saying no, uh, pushing it, or saying, oh my gosh, um, you know, this really did help my business. I need to fi fix it and figure out a way to get this so that we can, you know, have uh, digital trails and the ability to sell online and um, the ability to do intake online and the ability to uh, push workflows and things like that through to team members that might not necessarily be sitting next to each other um, in an office uh, who, who have to communicate with each other um, to make sure that those, uh, those applications are going through and um, updates to different products. I've even seen um, some people who come out with new products fairly quickly um, in, in uh, response to the COVID situation. So. Um, yeah, we're seeing the same thing, Danielle, um, kind of one extreme or the other, either totally, you know, putting everything on hold or really accelerating um, digital initiatives. We actually have, have one customer that um, purchased our, our solution to um, transform kind of agent quoting 
uh, for, for their business. But then once COVID happened, they decided they needed to, to do everything online, direct to consumer. So they kind of redeployed everything to their website um, simply because of COVID. So it was a whole new strategy for them. I have a, a client who is going through and, and going to direct to consumer for the first time. They're a, I think, 105 year old uh, insurance company. You know, they've never done direct to consumer uh, ever and um, are, are deploying it this year because of, um, of the impacts that this has had. So it's been interesting. I know that's not the only factor driving, but it's, it's definitely a big one. And we've seen um, some of the smaller agencies kind of take on this time to look at their digital transformation strategy and actually use this kind of space. It almost seems like they had more space to think about it. And then they definitely have been pushing a lot more and going a lot faster than they would have had this not been happening. So their timelines in a way almost sped up because they were like, hey, I have this gap. I can kind of take this time and focus a bit more, I guess, um, because they're at home, maybe because their environment changed. So that was really nice to see as well. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what is, is there anyone who's super excited about um, some of the, the new things that are coming out, the acquisition that's, that took place with Salesforce uh, and Velocity, um, maybe the orchestration of, of some of the new pieces that Doug uh, discussed um, and how all that can go about? Are there, are there things that people are super excited about that they, when they heard um, the presentations going through and or something that you think that maybe they're missing um, that they, is something that we can give feedback. I mean, you got direct feedback to the, to the people who are making decisions here. And um, so please feel free to, <laughs> to give both um, kudos and, uh, and help there as well. No one was excited about anything. Well, I had mentioned it once before, but again, um, as I've been going through uh, some of the trainings and things, and, and I'm now on my, um, my, I guess, second velocity project only this one, I've, I'm definitely in a more active role at this point. And um, I'm actually tying it in with Health Pods, which is really cool. And I've got some um, additional projects coming up where we're tying it in with um, FSC. Um, it's been, it's been really neat to see uh, the innovation that takes place and the ability to, um, to do so much uh, where manual processes used to take uh, precedent for everything. Um, and the ability to, I have people who have Excel spreadsheets where they are, you know, going through and looking up ratings every single time. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like it makes my heart palpitate a little bit to even think about um, having spreadsheets and things that people are going to on a regular basis and being able to to put in three or four different data points and, um, and you get exactly what it is that you need and push that through. Um, it's been a, been a cool, uh, experience for me as I've, I've been going through training and learning. So any other specific topics that anyone would like to discuss at this time? Going once, going twice. All right. Um, well, I'm, I, again, thank you so much to um, both Doug and Liz for being here. Uh, and um, we'll make sure that this uh, gets pushed out to everybody. And Liz, if you wouldn't mind sharing that webinar um, from a customer perspective, that would be wonderful as well. Um, just kind of some general announcements. Um, I am actually, uh, because I, I recently was named uh, marketing champion, um, I'm going to be doing some um, very similar to what Doug had mentioned um, about the taking particular pieces of the business and putting it together to, for cohesive um, functionality. Um, I've had a lot of people who are trying to um, bring their agents and their customers and put them into um, into different tracks, um, but they're not really sure exactly how to do that. So I'm going to be um, putting together a, a series uh, coming up here that talks about the journey strategies, um, what kind of strategies you can actually put in place, the people that you need in the room to actually make that happen, 
um, the people that you'll be pushing um, through the decisions that you need uh, made. I'll bring some actual use cases and best practices around it. Um, and then that'll be bringing in, um, obviously, Marketing Cloud or Pardot as, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of the communication um, portion to that. So whether you're using regular Salesforce, if you're using Health Cloud, if you're using um, FSC, um, if you're using kind of a, a hodgepodge of all of those together, um, we can be pulling in communities. Um, but uh, the need to, to communicate out to your people and, um, and be able to push uh, things so that there is better collaboration and communication. Um, that will be coming up soon. Uh, so uh, stay tuned on that one, uh, working to get that um, hopefully scheduled uh, for a series, uh, three week uh, series uh, coming up uh, towards the end of August, uh, beginning of September timeframe. Um, we are also gonna be doing a customer journey experience, uh, lunch and learn on August 12th, so market calendars for that one, um, as well as agent relations, uh, agent relations coming up on September 17th. So mark your calendar for that one as well. Um, as always, I am open to topics and love, love, love guest speakers. So if you have a cool story, uh, maybe it's um, a story internally that you have in your organization, or um, if you have a, a client who might be willing to share, um, or you just sharing um, overall best practices or things that you've seen in the industry, I'd love to see those. Um, so please, please, please uh, send that information. Um, the, again, we're going to be sending these, uh, both of these uh, decks out at the end. So just uh, added some helpful links in here. Most of you should be in the insurance success group, um, the, the actual Salesforce success, which is again, different than Bevy. Um, we've got so many technologies now that everything is, is tied together. Um, but please uh, have, make sure that you uh, go there. That's where all my announcements and things take place. Um, and also share it out with your uh, respective people so that we've got additional people to join. Um, if you guys are not uh, a part of it, the financial services group overall, um, run by Cheryl is her name. Um, it's a fantastic uh, group and they have a lot of um, items, uh, topics that they cover on a regular basis. Uh, and we do some conjunction work with them, but please go and um, join that group as well. And then we've got uh, obviously the Trailblazer community groups. Um, insurance, this is uh, obviously specific to insurance, but if you have a specific cloud that you're looking at as well, you can actually go to this link and find um, uh, particular groups in your area that might be meeting. Um, eventually, well, eventually, maybe we'll all get back to FaceTime um, meetings. Uh, and I think that there's, uh, depending on what area of the country you're in, um, some of them are starting to resume face-to-face um, -face meetings. Um, otherwise, a lot of them are still doing uh, their Zooms, but they have some really amazing topics. And um, actually, uh, because uh, some of these things are virtual, it's now allowed them the opportunity to bring in speakers that they wouldn't normally get to bring in. So, um, so definitely make sure that you check out those particular ones in your area or uh, that are around uh, the particular clouds that you might be interested in as well. With that said, um, thank you. Thank you all for taking the time today to come and spend it with me and talk a little bit about insurance. Thank you again to my guest speakers, appreciate it. Um, thank you for all the people who participated in conversation. And um, I just look forward to uh, catching you guys up uh, here in, G in August, it's July now, right? Um, in August on uh, the next one, so. Thank you all. And Thank you so much, Danielle. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye all. Have a fantastic rest of your week. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye.